Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead, starting the 7th of October. So getting straight into the week ahead, and it will be a key week in uh, the United States with the release of September CPI report, the FOMC meeting minutes and the start of earnings season at the forefront. Investors will also pay close attention to speeches by several Federal Reserve officials, along with data on producer prices, Michigan consumer sentiment and foreign trade. The Euro In Europe, uh, Germany will report on factory orders, industrial production, foreign trade and delayed retail sales, while the euro area will provide retail sales data. The UK will reveal its GDP growth and factory activity for August. Canada's, Canada's unemployment rate and foreign trade data are also in focus. Meanwhile, Australia will release NAB Business Confidence and Westpac Consumer Confidence reports and Japan will update the Reuters Tankan Index. Key interest rate decisions are expected from the New Zealand bank, so the RBNZ. So uh, lots going on uh, this week and the week ahead. And so uh, let's get into uh, what's happened uh, in the past as well as uh, potentially upcoming future uh, levels to kind of trade at. So um, starting off on the uh, dollar index and the uh, this is an equally weighted dollar index. There's a, a link on the top right hand side if you want to uh, learn why I use the equally weighted dollar index rather than the DXY or the USDX. And also as well, I had to plot not only the dollar index, but equally weighted uh, yen index um, and all other currencies uh, on your trading view chart. So uh, dollar this week, um, there was actually some really, really good news uh, with the dollar. And so um, going to the United States channel, right. So surprisingly strong hiring uh, non-farm payrolls in September has taken pressure off the Federal Reserve by reducing worries over the US labor market, giving policy uh, makers room to continue cutting rates uh, at a more gradual pace in coming months. Now, um, I did release a video um, on Friday, uh, basically from a, a group call, a private members group call that I had, and I was basically outlining this, right? If um, the Federal Reserve is seen to be cutting at 25 basis points rather than 50 basis points, then the dollar should rally or appreciate. Um, because really I think the market was, uh, a lot of the market had kind of priced in the potential for a 50 basis point, but there's no need for one now because um, the employment figures, um, which is a reflection of really how the economy is doing, um, you know, it doesn't require really more assistance with rate, uh, larger rate cuts. And so uh, 50 basis points has to be kind of priced out of the market. So there's less cuts um, uh, required. Therefore, the market has to reprice the dollar with a 25 uh, basis point cut. So it says today's report should make the Fed's job easier for Oli, who uh, previously called for another outsized cut, wrote in a note to clients. We now anticipate a path of 25 basis point cuts and for uh, it says here is from a JP Morgan he's a JP Morgan, JP Morgan chief economist Michael Faroli and uh, here it says the sizable acceleration in its in September's payroll and the lower unemployment rate which is also important coupled with broader strength in US economic data over the last couple of weeks uh, she wrote in a note to clients and she is a Bank of America economist uh, at Aditya uh, behave, um, uh, add to signs of resilience and strength in the case for a soft landing, soft landing meaning that the economy is not going to go into some sort of, um, you know, deep recession or anything like that. Recessions are inevitable, they are coming, but um, depending on, um, you know, how the economy feels like it's in a recession because even though you might go into a technical recession it might not feel to you know the public to me and you um or you know and uh, the citizens of america for example that they're actually in a recession right but the point is that you want a soft landing not a hard landing and that's good um and that's positive for the united states and the dollar 
So um, for now, the US dollar, I have changed my bias. I've been uh, quite bearish since I think maybe around July, um, towards the end of July, August. And uh, if you go back through my videos, my weekly videos, you'll know that I've been uh, short since around the, the beginning of August, end of July. Now I've changed my bias to really um, looking for buys or sells, right? There's it's there's a case to buy the dollar at lows, for example. If it does pull back to that low, there's definitely a case to buy the dollar. The reason to kind of sell the dollar at levels potentially, and I don't know necessarily whether it would be this one uh, per se, it might be a bit Bit higher uh, and also as well you're ne not necessarily selling the uh, the uh, dollar index right you're just looking at this as confluence so if the dollar comes up to the you know supply zone and then you want to look for short trades on a dollar uh, pair then that's what you that's how you're kind of looking at this but the but the case for um for uh, selling the dollar is that they're still cutting at the end of the day right they're still cutting by 25 basis points if they had taken cuts off the table i think that would be more of a buy um, uh, signal in terms of like you wouldn't necessarily want to um, sell the dollar if they're looking to hold rates but because they're still looking to cut rates um, you know they're still the central bank are looking to you know continue to kind of weaken or devalue their currency um, to basically engineer this uh, this soft landing and to tame inflation right so from that perspective I don't think that there's although there's upside I don't think that the upside is going to lead to some really outsized you know trend where the dollar is now you know you've got to be a dollar bull right they're still looking to cut by 25 basis points at every meeting that I think the next five meetings by 25 basis points so I do think the upside is capped so there are reasons to sell the dollar and there are reasons to buy the dollar at levels so um, I've changed my bias to um, a bit more neutral or what I call a more of a more of an auction or range bias where I'll be looking for you know market highs and market lows uh, for buys or sells or buys and sells so looking at the uh, the dollar yen and of course uh, we came to a bit of a pivotal point uh, on on friday and of course the data was much better than expected so um the dollar rallied right um against the yen now the yen has been on um a bit of a weak streak um the it's uh, where have i got it now one second i thought i had it lined up right so here we go um, so just again a bit of a recap so last week the dollar was I mean the yen was a bit weak and it was because there was an expectation that um, there was elections and there was an expect an expectation that one of the candidates uh, who was expected to win um, was quite dovish and uh, she didn't win so the hawkish um, uh, candidate won whose name was uh, Ishiba Shigeru Ishiba right so the, you, you see that the, the the yen kind of strengthened as he was you know announced um the prime the new prime minister but then he's come out and basically triggered a sharp yen slide on wednesday after he came out and said the yen japan or japan wasn't ready for higher borrowing costs for the time being in an unusually direct remark for a prime minister following his meeting with the bank of japan governor uh Kazuo Ueda right this is a surprise says uh Ueno a senior economist at NLI research institute in Tokyo this has strengthened my view that there will be no rate hike in December so um again the expectation the by the rumor was that he was hawkish and that um the bank of Japan may hike by uh, again by the end of the year so one more time but now that has to be kind of priced out after the prime minister had come out and pretty much pretty much was like well um they don't really, really want to hike uh, just yet so a bit of dove a bit more dovishness coming in for the yen so um the the, the kind of the reason to buy the yen though is over the medium to long term is the fact that they are still on the hiking cycle although be it very slowly whereas every other currency uh major currency um are still looking to cut rates to varying degrees so you still have a situation where even if the bank of japan hold rates this year 
um, other central bank banks are actively trying to devalue their currency, right? So um, in the short term, the yen is uh, struggling a bit, but I would expect the yen to gain some traction as other central banks, um, uh, again, uh, continue to cut rates. So uh, if you do want to be a buyer of the yen and a shorter of the dollar, I don't think you'd really want to do that. That's you no know, for now anyway, but you know now is the opportunity if you do want to do that. If you're looking for a uh, a buy trade, you know a buy at these lows, and in fact, let me just uh, actually let me convert that to demand, and maybe just drag that all the way down here. Um, the demand zone really kind of starts from this area here, this uh, one four three point uh, six area. So that's what you'll be looking for in terms of um, in terms of buys on the dollar. Uh, dollar Swiss. So again, the dollar rallies has rallied against pretty much all currencies. The Swiss franc, I'm a, I'm a seller of, to be fair. Um, and I wasn't really interested in this currency pair. Um, although, again, this probably would have turned around had the data come out, non-farm payrolls had come out terrible, right? Um, 50 basis points would have been priced in. But as they're being priced out, I think the dollar is definitely more of a buy than a sell against the... Um, against the Swiss franc. So if you're looking for buys, I think any pullbacks into a zone like here should be decent for a buy trade. And in fact, I'm just gonna uh, redraw the zone from around here to here. So yeah, a bit, a bit more of a pullback into that zone before looking at going uh, long um, to buy the dollar. If you're looking for um, short trades and buying a Swiss franc and you think the Swiss franc is a bargain up at these um, supply zone, this 87 round number, then you're looking at that as a as a sell. Uh, dollar CAD, and again, dollar CAD, not really a pair I'm interested in. Um, at the moment, both central banks are looking to cut rates uh, by 25 basis points. Um, the There are more cuts, I think, expected uh, from the Bank of Canada. So in fact, uh, the dollar uh, does have the edge, I think. So if I was looking for any uh, uh, trade on this, it would be to the upside. So I do think that any kind of buys back down into this zone uh, should be decent for a potential buy. The lower, the better, of course. I think that's a very nice zone. And uh, for those of you who have uh, joined uh, the mentoring group, you'll know this area as uh, a capture pain relief, right? A CPR zone right just below this zone, which is a, another um, uh, way to look at demand. And speaking of um, the uh, mentoring group, um, the mentoring group will be open until Sunday, the uh, 6th of October. And if you are looking to join you know, you'll get access to uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, um, which uh, I use to determine where currencies um, are in terms of, you know, strength and weakness, as well as the currency value cycle. So uh, the United States, although it's ranked number one, doesn't mean that it's it's going to, you know, uh, rank number one and be strong forever, right? Um, and so we use uh, data like GDP, you can see interest rates here and many others to um, get a feel and uh, for uh, where on which currencies we should be buying or selling. And then what we do is we go to the pairs and let me zoom out a little bit so I can show you. Um, and what I do every uh, week and weekend at the live members meeting on a Wednesday or Thursday and then on a Saturday we got a private mem private members um uh, uh uh analysis which I go into a lot more deeper analysis than what I release on YouTube um I go over my bias right and so I look at the pairs all of the pairs here and then I go over whether I'm long or short. So I'm not saying that, you know, prices are going to go, you know, long this week because I have no idea what price is going to do. I'm looking for bargains, I'm looking for pullbacks. So my overall buyers can be short or long or what I term a watch list, right? So it's definitely a pair that I'm I'm, I'm looking to trade, but with a bit more smaller size because um, the divergence might not be as clear. But ultimately, um, I go over this pretty much uh, every week for the private members, uh, uh, guys and girls that are in there, as well as um, the private members trading videos area, which is all the recordings for the week. Um, which you'll get access to. And this is, again, another treasure trove of information. Not only do I go over 
home with the videos recordings here weekly recordings um you know trade setups etc but also you can use this as uh, an educational um portal as well so if i type in interest i-n-t-e-r-e-s rates right basically you'll see all of the videos that go and mention and talk about interest rates. So in this video, for example, I talk about it says stagflation interest rates, inflation interest rates here, right? Um, how to compare the effects of interest rate cuts on Forex. So I've got plenty of uh, videos here um, talking about interest rates or, or, or inflation, for example, inflation, right? All past um uh, members only uh videos and webinars that go through everything and uh and yeah we, we got a great group as well so the discord group this is the discussion room and uh the courses are all here supply and demand capture pain relief stop hunts fundamental analysis trading psychology our general chit chat question and where the magic happens which is fundamental analysis where all the news is posted etc so lots going on in the uh the uh, members group and again this is information a lot of information you won't get access to uh with uh, or on youtube so again visit uh, trading180.com if you want to become a member because i will be closing doors at uh on the 6th of october sunday the 6th of october so going back to the uh dollar cad so really looking for just buys at areas if you are looking to trade this uh, currency pair i wouldn't necessarily look for uh, short trades or buy the uh, cad against the dollar pound dollar so pound dollar i still think is a bit more of a buy but we've come down to now this uh this demand zone in fact i will delete that so prices were due for a pullback right we needed prices to pull back after these higher highs higher lows of course the market is price sorry anywhere around uh now is a decent buy for the um for the pound, uh, looking at the pound uh, analysis and going to the UK channel, uh, we have here, it says the Bank of England, actually in fact, no, it wasn't there. Here we go. The uh, pound sterling's big reaction to an apparent switch in thinking at the Bank of England might be overdone. So uh, pretty much Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey said the bank could be more activist um, in cutting interest rates going forward, signalling it would speed up the pace of cuts um, of cuts interest rates, uh, speed up the pace it cuts interest rates. Right. So um, the the market obviously took that uh, that speech um, and uh, started pricing in more interest rate cuts, which is the reason why you ended up uh, seeing a um, uh, the uh, the pound start to sell off earlier in the week because the more cuts, you know, obviously the weaker the currency, right? But at the same time, uh, you also have a situation where here it says uh, the Bank of England chief uh, economist Hugh Pill warned against cutting rates too far or too fast as he set out his case for a gradual withdrawal of restrictive monetary policy over the coming months. So um, Pill was one of the hawkish members of the Monetary Policy Committee who opposed a quarter point rate uh, cut in of to 5% in August but voted to hold in September said he's concerned that inflation could prove more lasting than expected. So it's not an easy path for the Bank of England to uh, to cut rates at the moment moment because there are still concerns about inflation and also as well uh, the UK construction sector grew at its fastest pace in two and a half years in September a key survey showed in a boost to Prime Minister Keir Starmer after weeks of negative sentiment about the economy and so um, that is um, a great uh, um, confluence in terms of uh, how the economy is going doing because you have uh, expansion and contraction and as long as um, you have construction in the expansion end it's uh, and construction PMI it's uh, a decent um, uh, sign that the economy is doing okay so from that perspective I don't think the pound although yes you know, uh, Andrew Bailey came out and said the pound uh, and the Bank of England may look to cut rates and the market was pricing it in. I think maybe that could be priced in right now or at least down to these maybe 130 area. And that would be actually a really nice, I think, a really nice buy. So um, 
and I say really nice buy. I mean, it technically, fundamentally, um, of course, the, uh, the 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 dollar is pricing out rate rate cuts or rate uh, a fifty basis point rate cut. But I do feel that um, around the one thirty area should be a decent buy if you're looking to buy this currency. So quite nice. I wouldn't necessarily go short, but if you are, then you've got a supply zone all the way up at these highs to look for um, to look for sell trades. Uh, pound yen and the pound yen um, again the yen being a bit weak uh, the pound did sell off a little bit of course this week as well um, not really a pair I'm interested in but if you are looking to go long um, then you can kind of look for a pullback into this demand zone made some higher highs higher lows in here and uh, I think we may look to end up auctioning within a uh, this this between this one nine six round number and one ninety, which is what about six hundred pips worth of uh, worth of a range. So any shorts, you're probably looking at a short right now. If you look, if you think that the uh, the yen is more of a buy than the pound, uh, but if you think that the pound is more of a buy than the yen, then um, you're looking for a pullback. So um, yeah, the pound yen should be either a buy or a sell. Um, but overall, I'm not really interested in this pair. Uh, the euro dollar. So the euro has had a bit of a turn of events, right? In terms of uh, my bias, I changed my bias on the uh, on the euro to more of a sell um, last week. So um, you know we've got a bit of a divergence going on in terms of or convergence, I should more say, uh, when it comes to reversal of fortunes, right? So so the euro, uh, you know, about two three weeks ago was looking quite uh, strong and then we've had some you know some economic news that's come out um the market has now priced in a bit more um rate cuts for october where previously uh, there were no cuts and now we've got a situation where the uh, federal reserve and the market is pricing out cuts right pricing out uh, 50 basis point cuts so that's the reason why you're seeing this move here so the um just to be clear, the uh, the market is pricing in more cuts for the euro and pricing out uh, certain uh, the the amount of cuts for the uh, Federal Reserve, and so that is the reason why you're seeing prices pull back to this area. So the euro dollar now, I'm not really keen on uh, trading this at all. It's a bit of a harder read, right? In 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 my opinion, of course. Technically, this is a really nice zone, right? Very nice zone in terms of some support and resistance in this area around the 109.50s. But um, I prefer to look for trades that have a bigger divergence, right? A stronger divergence or convergence. And so although I do like that area technically, um, buying the euro at the moment against the dollar, ooh, it's a bit very, very tricky for me. So I'd rather stay out, right? When in doubt, stay out. So um, ultimately, um, I'm not looking to take this. But if you are, then you can look for either trades right now or maybe a bit more of a pullback. If you're looking to buy the uh, the US dollar, then you're looking for um, for this area here. You're looking for prices to kind of pull back up into that supply zone, the 111s, um, and then looking for a sell trade. But um, going to the Eurozone, we can see, uh, where is it now? Where have I got the analysis? Um, right, so the analysis is that the euro is poised for its longest losing streak since April as traders bet on an increasingly aggressive path for interest rate cuts by the European Central Bank. Traders have raised the odds of an ECB cut this month to around 90% as slowing inflation and deteriorating business sentiment prompt central bank officials to endorse easing. That's challenging a market narrative that the ECB will lag the Federal Reserve in slashing rates. So that was what it was before, right? So th the reason why you had this this move to the upside from like, you know, from beginning of July was because uh, the uh, the expectation was that the Federal Reserve were going to cut more than the European Central Bank. Now, you know, that isn't the case. Um, with strong US jobs data this week already having damped bets on another uh, half point Fed cut, Next test uh, for the euro will be whether that's backed up by key US payroll figures on Friday, which it was, right? So again, euro takes a hit on ECB rate cut 
bets, right? So we've pulled back at least, what, 200 pips based on now the market pricing in more cuts for the euro. So um, the euro for me isn't a buy. It's probably more of a sell. I say probably, but it is more of a sell for me. Not an all-out sell, but more of a sell as um, data doesn't really support buying, in my opinion. So any kind of short trades, any pullbacks to any kind of supply zone should would be, the, I think, the path of these resistance, at least in the short term. Um, Euro yen. So Euro yen. I do expect this to roll over eventually. Um, and so we are pulling back to this area. If we do pull up a bit higher, that would be, I think, a very nice area to look for some sort of uh, sell trade, um, especially if the uh, European Central Bank are looking to cut rates uh, this month at some point. So, um, so yeah, let's see what happens with the euro yen. But with the with the yen, um, ultimately uh, not cutting rates and looking to hike rates at some point next year, I do think that any kind of yen pre, uh, devaluation should be limited unless, of course, uh, for some reason, the uh, central bank, European central bank, uh, don't cut rates at all this this uh, uh, this um, this month. And then you're pretty likely to see the yen, um, sorry, the euro start to rally. Uh, looking at the euro pound, uh, euro pound looking for a bit of a pullback. Of course, this was driven on on the uh, Thursday by Andrew Bailey's comments. But then, of course, the bargain hunters for the pound ended up buying uh, the pound here, and now we're down at this area. So I didn't get a chance to get in short here, unfortunately. But I will look for any pullbacks. Um, I think are shorting opportunities. So if we do get a pullback up into that zone anywhere around here, I'm looking for a short trade on this, uh, on the euro uh, pound. If you are looking for a buy trade, then you can look for a uh, buy somewhere around here. But ultimately, I think the path for these resistance is still really to the downside. So any pullbacks where we are now, I think are nice shorting opportunities. Um, the Aussie dollar, the Aussie dollar's pulled back, right? So anyone who was looking for a buy on the Australian dollar, um, now is your chance. But I do think that the, um, the Australian dollar is still on the expensive side. It doesn't look like it here, but if you go to the, uh, Australian dollar index, you'll see that the Australian dollar index is still on the expensive side. So I would want to see the Australian dollar uh, cheapen a bit more, maybe around to the 67 areas before looking at going long. Um, again, the Australian uh, bank, central bank, the RBNZ, I'm sorry, the RBA, apologies, are uh, looking to hold rates until the end of the year uh, or going into 2025. So they're one of the last central banks to look to devalue their currency. So that should still support the Australian dollar over the um, the US dollar and continue this overall trend, right? So you get, you know, high, of course, low, then high, and then traders will start to say, well, why is it pulling back if it's supposed to be stronger? Like, it's just, you know, prices pulling back, prices have to pull back if you want to buy at value, right? So if anything, that's really where I would personally look for uh, some buy trades for the Australian dollar against the US dollar. And remember that the, um, the the Fed are likely to cut twice this year, whereas um, the Australian dollar um, may not. So still long trades on the um, Australian dollar. The only other thing as well to be careful of and be mindful of with the Australian dollar is risk off sentiment. Um, we do have um, obviously some uh, conflicts going on um, between Iran and um, Israel, but that hasn't quite fed into um, the markets just yet. I think the markets have been ignoring it a bit and more focused on the fundamental side of things, but that could drive prices even lower if tensions do start to escalate a bit more. So that's one of the things that are going against the Australian dollar. Uh, looking at gold, and again, gold is holding up. Why is gold holding up? Uh, my um, estimation would be that, again, the dollar and the Federal Reserve are still looking to cut rates, right? So it's not like, you know, you would see a massive sell-off. And even if you saw a massive sell-off, you should kind of look at this as a buying opportunity simply because, and not financial advice, but the Federal Reserve are still on the cutting cycle. And if they're on the cutting cycle, then gold should benefit from that. So any pullbacks to um, any demand zones around that 
two five uh, six nine area i think is going to be a great area to look for a buy trade or if prices make higher highs then a pull back into uh, maybe the two six fours uh, around there um, would be a nice buy trade but as it stands i think the nearest buy would be really at the uh, two five sixes so yeah, I wouldn't. There's no really real reason to uh, look for any kind of short trades on gold. Um, S and P, right? So uh, we did have a question in the group with regards to um, the S and P and why it's going higher. And uh, I guess I could show you this, right? So let's go to, uh, I guess one of the benefits, of course, of being in the group. So um, uh, it was one of the. Uh, the question was that uh, why did equities appreciate with the dollar? A stronger dollar should mean bearish uh, on equities, correct? And um, I did answer, but I would uh, give the answer more from Dr. Ninja, who's one of the uh, senior traders in, in Trading 180. Um, he said that the stock market has historically performed well after the Federal Reserve starts cutting rates, historically proven returns. Since 1974, stocks have been positive 80% of the time in 12 months following the first rate cut with an average return of 15%. Performance of bonds and cash and stocks have outperformed bonds and cash in the 12 months after the Fed starts cutting rates and resilient economy. When the economy is resilient and policy is less restrictive, stock and bond investors can benefit from rate cuts. So ultimately, um, it's really about a resilient economy and that's what's happened. And that's basically what I said. And I just said the economy was expected to go into recession sooner. Um, you know, the stock market may have sold off, but because of the great employment numbers uh, that, um, uh, that fear of a recession basically has dissipated. It's about the soft, hard landing uh, e economic narrative. And I said, have a read of this article from August. And that article kind of explains it. But Dr. Ninja has pretty much succinctly put it um, where it's uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant analysis and straight to the point, right? So that's the reason why you're seeing the S&P start to move a lot higher, or say a lot higher, but it didn't sell off in terms of the dollar up, you know, S&P down is what traders would typically think, but this is a lot more nuanced, right? If it, not everything um, is always, you know, diametrically opposed. There's a lot of nuance in um, in trading and the fundamentals that you have to be uh, aware of. And so if you're not aware of these things and you're just going on what you see online and maybe some, you know, old information, then that's how you're going to get caught out. A lot of traders, you know, retail traders and even, um, you know, non-retail traders, right, institutions, institutional traders, you know, may be having the same idea that prices may should have sold off on some, um, you know, some good news for the dollar and appreciating dollar when ultimately um, that, it's not the case. That's not to say that prices can't go down, right? It can, of course it can. But ultimately, if you're looking at the bigger picture, right? Bigger picture, any pullbacks really should be looked at as buying opportunities. That's what I would do um, at the moment until that soft landing narrative becomes a hard landing narrative. And again, statistically, uh, historically, we know that the um, S&P does continue to go higher uh, during the um, uh, the rate cutting cycle of the Fed. So really just buying opportunities on pullbacks. So that brings us to the end of the weekly analysis. And I'm going to now get into the trade update. So looking at the New Zealand yen. So uh, I entered this um, uh, last week. And this is just a bit of a trade update as to what's happened. So uh, I've managed to get into three positions and uh, one was a winner. So I'll zoom down into the lower time for actually Matthew, before I do that, just to show you basically the level uh, and what we were looking at. So again, you can go over last week's video and look at the entry. Um, but this was really the zone that I was looking at uh, going short from a fundamental perspective perspective. Um, the New Zealand, uh, uh, are really uh, the bank, RBNZ, are looking to cut rates and maybe by 50 basis points as well. So um, I do think that the New Zealand dollar should, if they do cut by 50 basis points, we should see price uh, roll over eventually. Of course, the yen has been 
um, you know, a bit a bit weak um, and surprisingly so as well because we do have risk off as well. So, um, but that, that still hasn't really um, got investors interested in buying the yen. And so um, going down to like the one hour, right? My entry was um, uh, several entries. So I had th uh, three entries. So price, my original entry was here and I had prices pulled back to my entry at the 90.95 area and then I had another entry a sell pending order at the 91.63s right and all of those by the way all of these um, uh, entries the stop loss um, is at these highs here the 92.50s or something like that 54.55s so when I got triggered on this um, with this trade here at this level um, what I'm looking for is actually a one to one, which it managed to just about get right here on the uh, early hours. Actually, it was about the early hours of uh, of Friday morning. So managed to uh, get a one to one on that. So now I've got two open positions, right? Two open positions. One here. Yeah. Right. One one at that pending order there and another one at the obviously the lows. But when we look at obviously when. I'm um, looking at the higher time frames, right? We've got a nice, some nice downside potential. So I've cancelled the higher pending order. So uh, that pending order right at the highs. Yeah, once I make a profit on one, then I'm cancelling this one. And now I've only got two positions. And if uh, this week the Reserve Bank of uh, New Zealand cut rates by 50 basis points, I would expect really prices to start to drop, not necessarily in, in that fashion, although that would be nice, but um, I do expect prices to eventually start to roll over. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens with that. So uh, winning position, and I've still got two open, and Aussie Swiss, uh, this, have been, this has been open since uh, September, September the 9th. So yeah, nearly, it's been about three weeks now. I've been trailing my stops up. My stop now is uh, still around the 57.90s, just below the, the 0 0.58. So my stop loss now is all the way up here. And so, but I'm just showing you the original, uh, one of the original positions on here, the, wall, the remaining position on this one that I have. Um, I'd won uh, several positions on this one, so it's only one position I'm I'm holding, and really I'm looking to swing trade this and hold this for as long as possible. So at the moment, if I get stopped out, it would have been a, a two to one, which is uh, which is fine, and um, as long as the Australian dollar um, is the stronger out of the two, and we don't get too much of a deeper pullback, hopefully we can you know, extend that risk reward. At the moment, if I was to take profit right now, it'd be at what, about two and a half to one. Um, so that's the trade updates, the new trades. So new trades, the pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand, we managed to get, well, I managed to get in. Um, this is a trade that I did uh, um, uh, go over in the uh, members area. So we entered... I entered on the uh, close of this candlestick here on the Monday. And again, exactly like um, uh, the uh, the New Zealand uh, yen I went over, I then enter into a pending order. In fact, let me just um, use this. So pending order, so market order there, then two pending orders. And as prices came back, triggered me in here and then triggered me into that trade right there. Right, so I got into three positions, all with the stop loss, all around this low here, which is around the two oh nine sixes. So that's where my stop loss was for all three uh, positions. So then I'm looking for a one to one, and I'm, my my main goal really is to get myself to either a break even or a profitable position. So when I'm in three positions, if I only get triggered into three positions now, I don't know whether prices are going to pull back to three or two or even four positions, right? Or it, maybe it might just you know continue going. But my main goal, my first thought when I'm in trades is to get myself to either a break even trade or a profitable position. So as I've got triggered into three trades. <clears throat> what I'm doing is is I'm going for a one to one on uh on this position. So when it triggered in down here, right, right there, um, after I'd entered, right, let me just zoom in a little bit more, right here. 
Yeah, I'm going for a one to one on that one. So that was when prices moved to the upside, reached the one to one, excellent. And then for this position, right, which was entered right there, I'm going for a one to one as well, right? Because I've I've basically won one, but I'm still open on two. So I'm still kind of in a, in a bit of a losing situation with that. Because if I lose, if I um if I win one and lose two, then um depending on how what my miss you know my position sizes is. I might either break even or lose it. But in this position, if I would have lost two, then I would be in a bit of a losing position. So with that being said, I needed to get a one-to-one -one on this position. So uh, this one hit a one-to-one -one, uh, right here. Yeah. So then I've only got this position now open in the market. So I've won two. I've now got this one that I can hold. And at the moment, we are now at a 1.65 to 1. And this one, again, if we, you know, I've got higher time frame targets. So lower time frame entries, higher time frame targets. I'm looking to hold this um, for a while. I think we can probably reach somewhere around these highs if the New Zealand dollar are very uh, bearish in terms of their, their dovishness so i do think that we can get to maybe five six to ones how long that might take who knows but ultimately um that's really what i'm looking to do and so um, i haven't trailed my stop up just i mean i've trailed it to around here so i've reduced my uh, my loss um to about here but nothing major i could still lose a little bit of money but ultimately it's not going to be much plus i've won two so that's um, where we are with the pound New Zealand. The pound CAD, again, an interesting one where we've got uh, a nice demand zone zooming out on the daily. Um, this is a trade, again, I spoke about at the end of our, um, uh, our, our group analysis on the Thursday. So Thursday evening when we were having our group call, I spotted this and I said to the guys, I'm getting involved in this. So I did exactly the same setup right where um i'm looking for now uh, four positions managed to enter right here where was the entry i mean two positions now because prices did pull back didn't quite hit a one-to-one -one on the um on that market order so now i'm looking for as we've triggered got triggered into this position right if prices don't pull back and they get me to a one-to-one, -one, which is going to be somewhere around here. Yeah, if prices go up, hit me at a one-to-one. -one, then what I'll do is I'll cancel the final two buy pending orders. And then what I'll do is I'll just swing trade this one. And trail my stops up and see how far it can go. Because I do think that the pound is really more of a buy than the Canadian dollar fundamentally. So that's where we are with the pound CAD, so not any no no winning positions just yet, and let's see what happens there. And the Swiss yen, so the Swiss yen, uh, my entry was um, was here, and basically very similar, exact same as the New Zealand yen. Um, I managed to get one position profitable, so this was where I managed to get triggered here and then as prices came down to a one-to-one -one, which was there so i managed to get one position out i'm still in two positions so these two sell positions here um, and then prices have spiked up not quite stopped me out so that's that's fine if it stops me out then obviously i've just won one and uh, lost two so a smaller loss um and so that's fine but um let's see what happens over the weekend i do expect in fact the uh, the, the the yen to strengthen of course that's obvious because otherwise i wouldn't go short but um the swiss franc um, for some strange reason is just not selling off even though inflation came out lower and uh, they had higher unemployment so um, all signs fundamentally are pointing towards a, a, a weaker Swiss franc but that just hasn't materialized just yet but if it doesn't and I get stopped out and, I, and another opportunity presents itself then I'm still going to look for some more short trades and take that because I do think that the Swiss franc should be um, a sell over the Japanese yen so um, yeah, that's where we are at the moment with the trades. And so again, just a quick reminder that the uh, the mentoring area, Discord area is open. If you do want to join and get fundamental analysis, uh, mentoring, 
with your technical analysis and uh, I look forward to working with you uh, if you do join. If not, I wish you all the best. Take care and speak to you soon.